What does baseball mean to America? Well, unique stadiums are historical landmarks, legendary players are immortalized and idolized within cities, and the Fall Classic is always the ultimate goal, no matter how long it takes. It's over, and the Cubs have finally won it all. Baseball is America's pastime, and its long-lasting tradition has integrated itself into the country's culture for years. Despite this, times have changed. MLB is rapidly declining in popularity. Certain team owners neglect their team's performance and own them for the sole purpose of making profit. Although a good amount of owners do the opposite and invest in the on-field production of the team, this difference causes a large disparity between teams with large payrolls and teams with small payrolls. Because Major League Baseball has no salary floor or cap, the massive contracts offered by top teams completely outmatch the offers from teams with lower budgets. As a result, annually, when free agency comes around, the disparity in team potential exponentially increases between small market and large market teams. Despite recent issues, no one can deny that most stadiums in the big leagues are iconic and can make up for a team's poor play on the field or overall irrelevance. But what about the exceptions? Not all stadiums are created equal. Ballpark issues can create a political divide between fans, the team, and the city they play in. Naturally, outdated venues are unattractive to fans, which decreases attendance. On top of this, a city's priorities and willingness to gather funding for a new venue can determine the fate of a team's long-term future in the region. Getting stadiums built can be extremely difficult and can take years to get approval. If a team cannot reach an agreement with the city, almost always, the team will move to a market that can provide a new stadium for them. Imagine a team that not only loses their most talented players to big market powerhouses, but also plays in a stadium in dire need of replacement. Meet the Oakland Athletics. My name is Casey. I've been an Oakland A's fan for my entire life. I chose the A's not only because they're my hometown team, but I really identify with the working mentality that they represent. The A's don't buy top talent. They grow it organically. The A's don't play in a world-class stadium. They play in a concrete jungle in the heart of an industrial complex. A passion of mine is making YouTube videos. It once started as a hobby, but then became a great way for me to connect with others and share my perspectives as a green collar fan. The recent problems with the Oakland A's have inspired me to seek out other perspectives through my platform, people with a presence in the A's community. So I started doing research and having discussions with these people. I wanted to tell a story of why a ball club from Oakland, California couldn't get the respect it deserved and how it was defined by its home and the uncertainty of its future. I hope you can see what faithful baseball fans in the East Bay have gone through in the past couple of decades and why this story has caused fans to worry and feel mistreated. This is the battle for the ballpark. I grew up an A's fan. I went to the Coliseum the first time when I was one years old, uh, and I've been going to A's games my whole life. Jose Canseco, uh, he was my favorite player growing up. Like I had a mullet and everything, so that was that's kind of how you describe my fandom, I guess. You know, if you were looking at what the A's mean to the city of Oakland, a lot. Um, the community impact is big in terms of dollars, obviously. Um, but also in terms of like civic pride, generations of fans, like look at you right now. I, I think that it gives everybody a bond. We could probably sit here and talk for like three hours and we've never talked before. And it's all because of that common bond in the A's. I believe the first game I ever attended, any baseball game was in 1982. A's and the California Angels they were back then, uh, because I think somebody along the way, my dad or my mom saved the ticket stub. Uh, so I would have been one years old when that happened. But I, I was born and bred an A's fan, and it obviously timed out with, you know, World Series appearance in 88, victory in 89, and another one in 1990, the heyday of McGuire and Conseco and Stu and Eck and Ricky and Carney and all that stuff. So. My impressionable years of life uh, were spent going to a lot of A's games, so that's where it started at NBC Sports. They just knew my history. One of the things they knew is that I'd done some work with the A's before, had roots there, had some connections there, so they put me kind of on that assignment from the very beginning. With San Francisco, Oakland, and San Jose, you have three major cities that are all combined into this one Bay Area. So I think it gives Oakland its unique identity. It gives the East Bay its unique identity. Um, they've created a proudful identity because of what they do and because of you know, their, their tie geographically to part of our region. A lot of people know me as uh, Hal the Hot Dog Guy. I'm a hot dog vendor uh, at the Coliseum. I really uh, enjoyed the ability of 
I was doing a job where I was vending, but I was also getting involved in inter, you know, interacting a ton with the, with the fans. Yeah, I mean, you know, being in a different colored vest and uh, uh, I started leading, you know, leading chants. Uh, you know, I started getting people to chant about hot dogs first. Uh, and then I started to get chant about the A's. That's just become, you know, just a really fun thing for me. And I think a fun thing for A's fans too, hopefully. If you're from the East Bay, if you're from Oakland, you know, it is the last sort of professional team uh, that exists here. The A's are that meeting place where, you know, everyone can get together and chant, let's go Oakland. The A's mean everything to Oakland. I mean, besides the obvious that they're the last team in Oakland, you know, there's there's a lot of Ace fans out there and they're hidden. They're really hidden. And I see them in different places, Some sometimes uh, in places that you wouldn't expect. I'm just a fan, really. I'm just somebody who spends a lot of time out there. I just want to be, always be a welcoming fan to everybody who wants to come sit out in the bleachers. Uh, we all do as a group. And yeah, just I, I enjoy getting to know the players and getting to know the fans and just enjoy just trying to be an ambassador to the team, I guess, in a way. Oakland's lost a lot of their identity, losing the Raiders, losing the Warriors. I mean, the A's are like the last really true part of that identity. They've been around for 54, 55 years in that city now. You, re you lose the A's now, you, that city really does not have much of an identity. Yeah, you have some historical parts of Oakland, things like that. but. Sports franchises, that, that's something everybody could attach to in somehow, some way. That's like, that's civic pride. You don't want to lose that. Although A's fans are clearly loyal and passionate, attendance numbers have declined pretty significantly over the years. There are two main reasons for these low numbers. The first reason is the Oakland Coliseum's age and poor fan experience. The second reason is the team ownership's unwillingness to expand its payroll and retain generational players. The proposed solution to these issues being discussed is building a new ballpark for the team. Although plans for said ballpark have changed frequently, the main goal is to build on Oakland's waterfront at Howard Terminal and keep the team in the city for generations to come. First opened in 1966, the Oakland Coliseum was originally home to just the National Football League's Oakland Raiders. When A's owner Charlie Finley moved the Athletics to Oakland from Kansas City in 1968, it seemed like a good fit. Stadiums used by both NFL and MLB teams were not uncommon at the time, and the A's had a winning team that attracted fans right away. Despite this, following three World Series championships in the early 1970s, attendance numbers would significantly dwindle. The A's almost left Oakland numerous times in this period, but after the Raiders left Oakland for Los Angeles in 1982, attendance increased as the Raiders' departure practically coincided with the Haas family's purchase of the Athletics in 1981. The 1980s were great for the Oakland Athletics. They had revitalized their brand, moving from a Kelly Green image to a modern forest green, and started winning at a higher rate than they'd done in close to a decade. The A's reached the World Series in 1988, 1989, and 1990, but only won in 1989, their fourth world championship in Oakland and ninth overall. They beat the Cross Bay rivals San Francisco Giants, who similarly to the A's, had also been playing in an aging stadium shared with an NFL franchise. Although the Oakland Coliseum at the time was nowhere near new or pristine, the A's had it to themselves until the Raiders returned to Oakland in 1995. This return would change the Oakland Coliseum forever, as Raiders owner Al Davis renovated the Coliseum to fit the football landscape better. Since the 1995 renovation, the Coliseum has been widely viewed as unappealing and unenjoyable to watch a game at. As the late 1990s and early 2000s saw new MLB ballparks for many different teams, including the Bay Area neighbor Giants, questions surrounding the A's future began to arise. Yeah, I think it gets a bad rap, um, but it also is well past its useful life. <laughs> um, you know, I look at it one way. You know, I could sit in the dugout. I am media now, so I see it two different ways. But, you know, I can look out across the playing surface and say, this is like one of the most beautiful playing surfaces in all sports. And, you know, when I sit there and I look out at the field, you know, I have all the nostalgia and the memories of, of the times I went, you know, growing up and even going there for work. I think people that hear about the Coliseum, hear about the 
possums and the feral cats and the seats breaking and the sewage issues and and I think that, I mean bullets raining down from the sky uh, things happen um, there that are kind of funny because that place is very old and you know I, I look at it as something that that I I, I love and in I could go there for any game and have a great time, but I think it gets a really, really uh, bad rap. Like, the, the lights just went out at Oracle Park, right? And they had to delay the game. If that happened at the Coliseum, and it has a lot, uh, you wouldn't hear the end of it, right? But you don't really ever hear about it again with the Giants. Well, I think we should all probably be real with ourselves that the Coliseum was originally meant for football, and they, they catered to playing baseball there. Like, they made it baseball capable. But then in 95, when the Raiders moved back, I mean, they made it more of a football multi-purpose complex than anything else. It's never been just a baseball stadium, but right now it is. But it also kind of, it missed the decades of the 80s and 90s where when it was 20 and 30 years old, it never got improvements. And so then that put that complex behind the curve in the 2000s, the 2010s, and here in the 20s, I mean, it is beyond fixing up. I, he I keep hearing that. Well, fix it up or tear down Mount Davis. Well, that doesn't <laughs> accomplish your goal here. In the early 2000s, in addition to exploring new sites for a stadium in Oakland, the A's started exploring other sites in the Bay Area, such as San Jose and Fremont. I just wanted to keep them in the Bay Area. It was one of those where it's like, my team's going to leave. At least let it be 30, 40 minutes south of Oakland compared to being 500, 600 miles away. After it was determined that the Giants had territorial rights of San Jose, the plan was dropped. Yeah, you know, I, I always thought Fremont was never a great idea. San Jose was a different one because it was going to be in a, in a proximity to downtown, a proximity to the tank, a proximity to the Duradon train complex, which is now adding a BART station, kind of where the ballpark was going to be. And not to mention, I mean, I spent a large chunk of my life going to college in San Jose. I've worked also with the Sharks all these years. I know what San Jose is capable of. The previous ownership group wasted a bunch of years on San Jose, which they never even had the territorial rights for. So in a way, I blame baseball more than anything, right? Like baseball could have done what was right in a sense and give back the territorial rights that they owned in the first place before they gave them to the Giants for nothing. The A's would have been in San Jose, they would have a brand new stadium, they'd still be in this region, right? Like, so that's one way to look at it. They wasted a ton of years on Fremont and San Jose. Through the 2010s, stadium talks would continuously halt and resume. And in 2020, the Oakland Raiders moved to Las Vegas, leaving the A's as the only tenant at the Coliseum. In addition to the Raiders' departure, the Golden State Warriors, who had played at the Oracle Arena, on the Coliseum site, moved across the bay to San Francisco, leaving the A's as the last professional team in Oakland. Right now, the A's feel out of place as they're left in an aging stadium designed for the wrong sport. Attendance has reached embarrassing lows in the present day, and fans have been criticized for not showing up. Going to the Coliseum every day, you know, you hear from a lot of people who still love the Coliseum, right? But those are the people who are still going. Right? Like, it's not a random sample. That's a, that is not a random sample of potential A's fans, right? You're only sampling from the people who like, like going to the Coliseum. Anything that's negative, just like how most things are, anything that's negative, people will point it out and just talk about it and beat it to death. Anybody that's outside of Oakland, just talk, continuously talk smack. Because if it's not PNC Park, if it's not Oracle Park, if it's not you know, Fenway Park or Yankee Stadium, if it doesn't meet to their standards, because they're so used to that, they just, you know, they will find a way to hate on the Coliseum. Well, I think that what outsiders would do is say, oh man, there's like 4,000 people there, they're terrible fans, right? The outsiders will blame the, the interest levels of fans of the A's, and I think that's a complete farce. In the 21st century, the A's have been known as a competitive team on a tight budget. While teams with similar payrolls have consistently stayed towards the bottom of the standings, the A's have put together good teams despite having a low budget for players. This is because the A's front office's innovative tactics in conjunction with a solid minor league system have been able to develop unknown players into stars. The 2011 film, Moneyball, focuses on the 2002 A's, a prime example of this. The A's were able to win an American League record 20 straight games while having the third lowest payroll in baseball. However, there's a number of issues with this strategy. For one, baseball is a long season. While playing good during the regular season is important, 
If a team loses steam in the postseason, they aren't bound to win a title. The Athletics struggled with this in the 2000s and 2010s, as although they'd consistently qualify for the postseason, they'd find themselves losing in heartbreaking fashion early on in the playoffs. Another issue with this formula is that once the inexpensive contracts that the developed superstar players have expire, the A's are forced to see them go, as trading them for more young talent is often the most cost-efficient option. So, the Athletics, for decades now, have gone through a cycle of developing all-star level players, reaching the postseason and losing, tearing down the roster, acquiring prospects, and then doing it all over again. Because of this, the A's have been unable to even make it to a World Series since 1990. I mean, this season started with Matt Olson getting traded and Matt Chapman getting traded and Chris Bassett and Sean Manaya, and you know, the list goes on. Uh, at that point, if you're not gonna spend money on the team as an owner, why should the fans spend money on tickets as a fan? You let a lot of players get them walk, and then you honestly raise ticket prices 40 odd percent. It's just, you're pricing people out. Yeah, we've been beat around so many times by ownership. It's very tough to kind of, I don't expect people to show up every day like me. I'm, I'm, I'm weird, I'm crazy, I'll do it because it's just, that's who I am, but yeah, I don't blame people for not showing up, I really don't. While postseason bound A's teams draw fans to the ballpark, the question surrounding the possible length of each player's tenure in Oakland causes fans to become skeptical, which draws them away from buying player-themed merchandise such as jerseys. Of course, attendance remains low, and during the years when the A's sell off their talent, attendance plummets even more. There's so many people that I know who used to go to the games, and sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. They went from being there every single day to, you know, partially there, and to now, because of everything that's happened, in the past, you know, past year, they've, you know, they said that was their last straw and they just, you know, they're not going at all. The one thing they've never had to go with successful teams is like the real true environment. And by that, like I told you before, yeah, when it, there's a playoff game and the Coliseum is packed, there's nothing like it. But what about the other 81 regular season games every season? Well, why do the A's have such a low player payroll to begin with? Owner John Fisher, whose net worth is valued at around $2.4 billion, has made it clear that he doesn't want to put any more money into the team than he has to. Fisher became full owner of the A's in 2016, and attendance has been towards the bottom year in and year out. John Fisher isn't the only one to blame. Previous ownership kept the payroll low too, but didn't alienate the fan base from the team like Fisher does. In May of 2021, in the midst of a somewhat decent season for the A's, Team President Dave Cavill wrote a letter to fans expressing the ownership's frustrations with the City of Oakland's inability to help reach a deal on the Howard Terminal plan. The A's would start exploring relocation options, and Las Vegas appeared as a clear front runner. Oh, that was, uh, I mean, it was insulting. It was just it was just a slap to the face with the fan base, and trust me, it changes everybody's perception of Cavill right after that change. He, we thought he was like the savior, the holy grail, the franchise, and he immediately went to an automatic villain just overnight because of uh, insulting the fan base and insulting all of us trying to say, oh, now we're gonna look at Vegas too. It was, it, it was so unexpected. Yeah, it hit like a ton of bricks, right? Because all of a sudden, you know, the talks of Charlotte and Portland and Montreal and in Las Vegas, they weren't real, right? The, the A's won't address it. It'll be talked about, but it's not real. Okay, well, guess what? Now the A's are talking about it. So I think it was, it was, um, it was a big warning shot to everybody. And, it, and all of a sudden it got really personal and Las Vegas gets personal because, well, Oakland's just lost a team to Las Vegas. You also understand that of all the other cities, Las Vegas seems, and it just seems like, I don't know this for sure, but seems the most opportunistic to making a deal with you, you know, whereas maybe it's a little bit tougher in a, in a Portland or a Charlotte. I don't know. I'm just guessing because they've been flexible before. So I think it, it got very real and very intimidating. And I'll just say this is my only other, you know, part of it. It is what caught the attention of Oakland all of a sudden in retrospect. And I realize that it, it continues to not be favorable as a discussion point. But at some at some point, yeah, more than a year ago, it's what all of a sudden had the city council taking a vote on July 20th, whether or not to go forward with a, a term sheet. Turned out to be their own term sheet, which wasn't perfect, but... You understand my point. It it did kick things into motion. So as much as as I get it, you know, Las Vegas is a sore subject. It's also what has I think hit the accelerator just a little bit for the city of Oakland to to 
to make the government side of it actually process things at, at a reasonable rate. So I was really hard on A's ownership. I was really hard on Dave Cavill. Um, you can see the tweets. <laughs> I mean, I hammered him hard, and we've talked about that. I told him I hammered you hard, so, you know, and he's like, it's cool, I get it, whatever. Like, you know, it's just, it's just the way it goes. Um, and that's just the way it is. But what, what Vegas was, was a leverage play, and it still is. Oakland is the plan, Vegas is the backup plan. Now, I will say I understand Las Vegas, and the reason I say that is because, one, as a leverage play, it worked. Look at what happened since they made that move and said that they were considering Vegas. A ton, a ton has happened. Now, I also see Vegas as a good backup plan because let's just say you spend all this time and money trying to build Howard Terminal. They're, you know, three, four years in on that, and it fails. You can't build here. What are you gonna do? Are you gonna build at the Coliseum? I just don't think they have any desire to do that. And if you build in Las Vegas, guess what? <laughs> you don't have an environmental impact report. You don't have a million hurdles you have to clear with the port and, and the BCDC and all these other things. Vegas is like, oh, you wanna build there? Okay, here's the shovel. <laughs> it was just annoying because like, you know, throughout the season, the team is doing good. And then you just hear that news and, you know, instead of, oh, yeah, we could possibly make it to the playoffs and try to win the division and all that, your mind is like, oh, are they going to leave? In 2022, the A's had one of their worst seasons in their history and had the lowest attendance in baseball. Ticket prices were ironically raised, and it became clear that the A's future was certainly questionable. Getting a new stadium built for the athletics has been an issue for decades, but in the present day, the A's appear to have a plan in mind to stay in Oakland for years to come. The Howard Terminal site, that was first introduced as a stadium location before Dave Cavill joined the A's as president, was reintroduced in 2018 by Cavill, coinciding with the A's 50th anniversary in Oakland. The Howard Terminal site has tons of potential and could be very lucrative if utilized properly. It sits right on the waterfront and currently is home to trucks and shipping containers. The Athletics see this plot of land as grounds for a very exciting place to host a team, as the San Francisco Giants waterfront stadium has been popular and attractive for two decades. The general consensus among A's fans is that a new ballpark on the waterfront would cultivate Oakland baseball to a whole new level and would provide a fan experience that would grow attendance and make watching games enjoyable. If they build at Howard Terminal, you know, they're buying into Oakland. They're investing in Oakland. They're investing in this region. They're showing the fans here that they're here to stay and that they're putting their money where their mouth is. And when they build that stadium, this is a whole other argument we could get into, the payroll is going to go up because the revenue streams are going to be so much greater than they are now. Remember, they're paying rent to play at the Coliseum. At Howard Terminal, they would get every penny out of every ticket sold, whether it's an A's game, a Beyonce concert, like whatever's happening, they're getting that money. So the revenue streams are gonna be different, plus the real estate there, they're gonna be making a ton of money on that. So the A's have always been built like a business, right? They don't bring in a lot of money, so they don't spend a lot of money. When they're bringing in more money, the payroll's gonna go up. All the good stadiums that you, you, know, you, know, you hear about are, uh, are in these great locations, right? It's not necessarily the water. It's that it's next to Jack London Square, with neighbor like a neighborhood with restaurants and breweries and stuff. You leave a Giants game, uh, you know, you can go to all these different, you know, in, in Soma, you can go to all these bars, you know, for hours after the game or, you know, hours before the game, you know, um, it's like a cool place to hang out. Jack London Square will be that kind of place. I think Howard Terminal would bring in the casual fan, like never, never seen before in Oakland. You know, it took them having to be in World Series three straight years to get those casual fans out in 88, 89, 90, 91, 92. And, you know, Mark McGuire was still there. Jose was still there. But it, that's what it took to draw casual fans. Howard Terminal in itself is a draw to people who are like, oh, well, I, I do like baseball and I, I kind of like the A's, but I really want to see what everybody's talking about here in this new ballpark experience. It's really cool, I heard. I got to go. So that's something that they've never had. To me, in my head, all I see is positives if that ballpark is built there. And it's not its not only good for the A's, it's not only good for me because I love the A's and I want them to stay, but it's good for Oakland entirety, for everything. And that's what I think, you know, if they, need to, they need to stay here. They need to build that ballpark right there and it changes everything. It's a game changer. Yeah, waterfront. I mean, that's what everybody wants. You don't want like a downtown view or you want the waterfront park because it's shiny, it's nice, and it, it, it changes things up for a franchise. So 
I see him doing that. I see it. it'll be it'll be a great experience. I mean, that area is awesome to be around to begin with, and it's just gonna make it even better. There's got to be statues. There's got to be history. Everybody walking from Jacklin and Square to the stadium, or wherever you're walking from the stadium, to to like be picking up pieces of history all the way in. I want all these things as I approach to to really remind me of like the grand history of this franchise because. I think that the A's have one of the most rich histories in all of baseball. Not only will the stadium utilize an area of Oakland that truly has tons of potential right now, but it'll also give A's fans a home that they deserve. No new stadium has ever come up in Oakland since the Coliseum, and so this stadium will really symbolize the fight to get a new home for the Oakland A's and really change the culture of sports in Oakland and shed light on Oakland as a legitimate sports city that deserves respect after having super loyal fans and a rich history of sports teams. Having walked the site, I think what most people don't ever realize is how big those cranes are. They are like magnificent. Um, they're probably in need of just a quick paint job and a touch up and, you know, uh, refreshing. And I know they'll do that because uh, they're not going to be used anymore. But what I, what I feel like is most, um, not understood yet, not realized yet about this project and the site is just its location. I mean, when you get on that waterfront, because who is ever beyond Jack London Square, which is visited, but not to the degree utilized that it could be, when you spend any time down there, uh, going to Scott Seafood, popular restaurant down there. I used to work at, at Channel 2, which is just a little bit further down the estuary. Um, and you realize what a beautiful untapped area that is. And you realize a ballpark's gonna be here with these cool cranes, with kind of the environment surrounding it. Um, that's the part that I can already see, you know, with, just by being there that most people don't understand yet. While the beautiful renderings and ongoing chatter about the proposed waterfront plan have excited A's fans, roadblocks have historically shut down potential A's ballpark ideas making this idea seem unfeasible at times. For example, in 2002, the A's wanted to build a 42,000 seat uptown stadium near the historic Fox Theater, but this plan was vetoed by city officials. A 2005 Coliseum site stadium plan fell through due to property owners refusing to sell the needed land. A 2011 multi-facility complex at the Coliseum site called Coliseum City fell through, and in 2017, the Peralta site, a proposed ballpark location near Laney College, was proposed and then shut down just months later. A's fans fear that while it's hard for the everyday fan to oppose such an incredible plan like Howard Terminal, certain logistical concerns could ultimately kill the idea. Howard Terminal is a $12 billion project. While the stadium itself would only cost around $1 billion, that remaining $11 billion would be used to completely revitalize the surrounding area to include residential districts, business complexes, and infrastructure. Unlike many stadium projects in the United States, the Howard Terminal Stadium is privately financed. But, justifiably, the A's want compensation for renovating and building off-site infrastructure, such as sidewalks, streets, and public parks. This infrastructure would cost hundreds of millions of dollars, and this funding would be provided by Alameda County. However, Ill-informed opposition groups see this funding as a billion-dollar organization taking from taxpayers, even though this simply isn't the case. Thus, this iteration of the Howard Terminal Plan, which was originally expected to be finished by 2023, has been constantly delayed. Aside from the challenges, the A's are the closest they've ever been in securing a new home in Oakland. While Las Vegas has been constantly mentioned as a second option, there haven't been any public stadium renderings of any Las Vegas sites and the source of funding for said ballpark is unclear. In addition to this, Las Vegas doesn't have a waterfront. There also isn't an existing A's fan base in that region. While many people disagree on where the A's should build their new stadium, the one thing that is universally agreed on is the fact that the Oakland Coliseum is not a viable place to host the team for the coming years, and the A's need a new home. MLB Commissioner Rob Manfred has made it clear that Oakland and St. Petersburg stadium issues need to be addressed, or team relocation will occur. But what will happen if the Oakland plan falls through and the A's do move to Southern Nevada? Well, with the Raiders and Warriors also gone, Oakland will no longer be a sports city. Decades of civic pride will fade into distant memories. Existing A's fans will be left confused on which route to take, as San Francisco's teams will ultimately overtake the East Bay market stripping Oakland of its uniqueness and ability to rival the city across the bay. I still personally will follow the team, watch the team. I just would never wear anything with a certain city across my chest. I'll still wear my Oakland jerseys, everything else. Uh, 
we want to be going to as many games, that's for sure. And uh, it'd be tougher, but I would still do it. Not a problem. If the A's left for Las Vegas, as a fan, I would not follow them at all. Um, as a media member, I would probably follow them up until the point they left. When they cross that state line to Nevada, that's Nevada's deal, right? You know, I, I would be tremendously sad. And on a multitude of levels, as I told you before, it's where, you know, my parents brought me going to A's games before I could walk or talk. Uh, it's where I learned the game of baseball, that stadium. And I don't mean just that stadium, the East Bay, the city of Oakland. Like it's, I'll feel just fine if we're going to games at Howard Terminal. Like I'm not sentimental to the Coliseum. I'm sentimental to the A's in Oakland. And I think now as a dad of a young child, you know, I want him and us and my family to have that opportunity to eventually take him to a new ballpark um, and let that, that legacy continue. So, you know, personally, it's sentimental. It really is that if this goes away, I realize that part of my history is gone and can't be ever replicated again. A's fans hope for a clear decision sometime soon, despite the constant delays in the process. Regardless of the decision, over 50 years of cherished baseball, four World Series titles, and many Hall of Fame players will always be rooted in Oakland.